Hello, and welcome to episode 12 of A Week in Watches, a weekly look back at interesting watch news, releases, and stories. I'm your host, Zach Weiss, co-founder of Worn and Wound. Thank you for joining me. This week is all about the pros. We've got two releases uh, with a self-appointed uh, professional nomiker in the title. Um, it wasn't intentional that we talked about them both this week, but you know, we're all professionals around here, so we'll uh, roll with it. We also have a look at an auction of some truly historic watches by uh, not just a professional, but a, a true master watchmaker. So that's pretty exciting. Um, if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, we really appreciate it. This week's sponsor is the Wind Up Watch Shop, where there is going to be a Labor Day sale where uh, various products from across the shop are gonna be up to 15% off. And that is going to run from uh, August 26th through September 7th. Uh, in addition to items being on sale, there will also be gifts with purchases for uh, orders over $500. So be sure to check that out at windupwatchup.com. Uh, get yourself something nice. You deserve it. Tag Heuer paints a landscape with their new GMT. Uh, Tag Heuer's Aqua Racer line uh, has been around for quite some time. I, I think it might have launched in like the early 2000s, maybe even earlier. Uh, but they relaunched it again last year uh, and they made it kind of a more a tougher line, a more toolish line, yet refined from their previous models as well. They're uh, less ornamental and more functional looking. The design uh, is defined by a dodecagonal bezel is hard to say. Um, faceted applied numerals uh, with hexagonal hours, um, adding a aggressive, kind of an aggressive edge to the dial I found appealing. Um, they also have a horizon line dial, which is a nice way of saying they have like a, a lines running across the dial in a, in a texture. And there's multiple sizes depending on the series. There's 300 meter versions, there's 200 meter versions, um, and they range from 30 millimeters, so quite small, up to uh, 45 for a very robust model. Um, 43 millimeters and 40 millimeters uh, are the most common sizes. However, there's different movements, there's different bezels, inserts, hands. Uh, I'd say these are clearly watches that are aimed at the, the sort of Omega Seamaster market, but at a more uh, obtainable price point. So mechanical versions of these aqua racers begin at the upper uh, 2k range whereas uh, the omegas start at 5k and that is uh, msrp of course so they might very well be less in actuality in a store so this week they launched a new gmt version of the 43 millimeter 300 professional and it's powered by the Hoyer Caliber 7, which is an ETA 2892 base. This features an adjustable 24 hour hand, so it's a collar style GMT. This isn't the first Aqua Racer GMT that they've made. They're actually slightly older ones still even available, but this is the first of that new series, that kind of relaunch design of the Aqua Racer. But what really stands out about this watch is actually the colorway. Um, it's inspired by a sunny day on the water. The bezel is a split tone ceramic insert uh, in blue and white, sort of representing you know, a cloudy sky. It also functions for day and night naturally. It's a bi-directional bezel and features kind of the 24 hour marks that you would expect on a uh, GMT of this style. The dark blue dial is then matching that bezel and it sort of represents the water. And uh, on, to, on that, on the various hands, you'll find some bright yellow highlights for beams of sunlight. Um, it sounds kind of corny, but honestly, it's quite appealing in actuality. Um, and it's a nice change from the perhaps overused uh, color combinations of Pepsi and Coke and some of the other ones you're just likely very familiar with. There are two strap options, a steel bracelet, which comes in at $3,800 and a rubber strap at $3,500. Um, I'm actually not a huge rubber strap person, but this one looks very nice and sort of pulls the horizon line motif from the dial into the strap and it fits it really well. Um, and both feature adjustable uh, clasps, which is great so that you can, you know, make the bracelet or strap a little bit larger through the day for comfort. Three ultra rare watches by a true master go to auction. Uh, Dr. George Daniels is a name that is synonymous with horology um, and not necessarily luxury, though his watches and pocket watches certainly were absolutely luxurious, but rather the true, you know, study, science and craft of watchmaking. He's considered one of, if not the most important watchmaker of the last few centuries um, and has many, you know, achievements under his belt during his lifetime. Most recognizably, though, was perhaps the coaxial escapement invented in 1975 
and currently used by Omega in uh, most of their calibers. I could go on to describe how that works, but it would take way too long. So I do recommend reading it because it is actually a, a really fascinating, uh, you know, bit of, a, of, an, of an invention, frankly. Over his lifetime, he produced 23 pocket watches and two wrist watches entirely created by hand. Um, there was a method he calls he coined called the Daniels method, but they are truly handmade watches. Other watches that, uh, with his name on it, were um, designed by George Daniels and either made in collaboration with or by Roger W. Smith, uh, his only protege and a renowned watchmaker um, in his own right, who continues the George Daniels legacy uh, to this day um, on the Isle of Man in the UK. Needless to say, these three watches are very, very rare. Um, they are collectible in the sense of true historical artifacts, um, not watches you buy to flex on Instagram. Phillips announced an auction of three of George Daniels wristwatches, including one of the two that Dr. Daniels made uh, by hand himself. Um, it's the star of the show, um, though all three are incredible, and it is called the Spring Case Tourbillon. This is an absolutely stunning solid gold watch with a spring case that allows the watch to uh, flip out on a hinge. So it's sort of like a reverso design. On the back side is a dial as well, which is fully guilloshed and features a pointer day, a pointer date, as well as a view of the one minute coaxial tourbillon. The dial is similarly refined uh, with off center hour and minute, uh, which I, I just absolutely love it when the center of the dial sort of moved off axis. Uh, an oversized sub seconds and a small power reserve uh, all in line. Uh, it features a you know gold motif with a guilloche silver all all handmade. Um, it's really wild when you think about the amount of uh, talent and work that that took. It's estimated at over 1 million uh, Swiss francs which uh, seems frankly, like an understatement. Uh, this is gonna be an interesting one to watch just because it likely will set records. The other two watches were not made exclusively by Daniels. So there is the George Daniels anniversary watch, which is one of 35 pieces celebrating the 35th anniversary of the coaxial design. Uh, the watch is designed by George Daniels, but it was made by Roger W. Smith. Um, you know, just just look at the images on the screen. Uh, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. And if you're not uh, viewing this, please go check out Zach Azan's uh, write-up of this auction on WarnerWound.com. That one is estimated at 300 to 600,000 Swiss francs. And lastly, there's the George Daniels Millennium, which utilized a heavily reworked Omega caliber fit with the coaxial escapement. Um, and that is built by uh, George Daniels and uh, Roger Smith. It's one of 48 pieces. Those were made in the, the late 90s, sort of as a, uh, to, to celebrate the acceptance of the coaxial escapement by the Swiss watch making industry. That one's estimated at 250 to 500,000 Swiss francs. These are truly transcendent timepieces. These are grails for those who collect grails. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up in museums someday. Should you be in the Geneva or surrounding area, uh, you can check out the watches uh, the weekend that this is airing. So that's the 29th of August to the 1st of September. And then they will be up for auction at the Geneva watch auction number 16, uh, November uh, 5th and 6th. Now it's time for the release of the week. Christopher Ward trims the fat with the C6300 Pro. Christopher Ward is a bit of a staple around here, as you might have noticed if you've watched our other episodes. Uh, they consistently produce fun, affordable, and high quality watches uh, that punch well above their weight in terms of fit and finish, which is exactly what we've always looked for at Worn and Wound. Um, over the years, they've refined their design language and to create a visual identity that is uh, that perhaps like lacked in the very early years of Christopher War. That was sort of my biggest critique of their watches back in the day. This began to change uh, in 2019, however, with the introduction of the light catcher case, which uh, can now be seen across most of their watches. Um, it's an intricate case design that uh, is appealing from every angle. It has various undercuts on it, nice lines and some really cool little tricks um, that help it actually hide whatever the height of the watch is as well um, and feature some really exceptional finishing. At the core of the Christopher Ward catalog is the C60 Trident Pro line. This is their line of modern dive watches. Um, there are more variations of this single watch than most brands have in their whole catalog. There's multiple sizes, multiple movements, different depths depth ratings, versions with sapphire crystals, or sapphire dials rather, different case materials, you know, basically everything you can think of. One of the standout features of the C60 Trident Pro version 3, which uh, was released in 2019, is that the base version 
featured 600 meters of water resistance, despite a price point of around 1K, and that's true in various diameters, and they were all around 12.95 millimeters thick. Most brands won an award for making a 500 meter watch. Seaboard did 600 all day, with the occasional 1000 meter watch as well and all in relatively compact packages. However, for their newest C60s, they did the opposite of what most brands do, which is make something that's really high water resistance to show off, and they actually lowered the water resistance to the normal top end of brands to 300 meters uh, to shave off some thickness from these watches. Um, you might have guessed it. These watches are called the C60 Trident Pro 300. And reducing the water resistance and thickness isn't all that's different. Um, Christopher Ward did something quite daring, and they went to their forums to find out what people wanted uh, changed from the C60. So there's some subtle differences throughout. The date is at six. The second hand has a loomed arrow tip. The twin flag logo is the only branding text on the dial, which is becoming sort of the common, uh, the norm for their, their watches. So now it just says Christopher Ward on the back. And the bezel actually got a really interesting update. There's a ceramic insert. These always had ceramic inserts, but the ceramic insert now features a, a fully uh, loomed numerals all around. So, you know, you have five, 10, 15, etc., And a wider steel band on the inside that has the individual markings or the gradations, you know, per minute. Uh, this is pulled sort of from their Elite and Sapphire models. And it's um, actually a fairly unique detail to the brand. And it definitely gives the watch a, a nice kind of modern look to it. There are four colors and three sizes of the C60 Pro 300 at launch with various strap options. So there's white, blue, green, and black with matching bezels, save the white, which has a black bezel. And then there are 38, 40, and 42 millimeter case sizes. I said these are thinner than the 600 meters, which had a 12.95 millimeter case, which really isn't that thick when you think about it. But the 38 is now 11 millimeters, the 40 is 11.3 millimeters, and the 42 is 11.5 millimeters. These are uh, really quite thin for, for 300 meter divers, um, which is gonna likely just make them really great everyday wear watches and very versatile. The 38 by 11 in, in particular really sounds fantastic. All models are powered by the Solita SW200 and have a starting price on a rubber strap or tied material strap of $850 and then they go up to 1,050 on a bracelet. So these are still a really fantastic value. In fact, I think they came down in price just a little bit from the previous models. I think this is a really nice refinement and it's really actually cool to see a brand do the rare downgrade of a, of a, of a, you know, a feature, in this case, 600 meters to 300 meters um, for the sake of comfort. And with that said, 300 meters is way more than enough. And that's it for this week's episode of A Week in Watches. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Um, don't forget to head to Worn and Wound Daily for watch news and watch reviews, and um, I'll see you next time.